In today's Blender tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to vacuum pack stuff like a pro in Blender. So we're going to be making this little animation that you can see over here on the screen. And here you can see the blend file. It's really simple. We're going to be doing some cool cloth simulation to kind of do this sort of cool looking shrink wrap that goes around some text. Um, and I'll show you what the text looks like quickly. And we're going to be adding some random colors to this text in our nodes using the object info node. It's really simple. Um, so yeah, I'll be uploading the final result that you can see here, the animation, which we'll be making today. I will upload that blend file to my Patreon as well. So those of you who are on Patreon will be getting that. If you want to find out more, you can check that out in the description. Yeah, so let's jump into the tutorial, making shrink wrapped objects in Blender like a pro. Okay, so let's jump into Blender. I'll be using the 4.2 build of Blender at this time, and I'm just gonna select all of the default objects and press delete. We're then gonna go Shift A, and we're just gonna to go to our text option here and click on it. And to make things simpler, you can just go into your top orthographic view. And to edit text in Blender, it's really simple. You just go over here into edit mode, and then you can just type on your keyboard like you would in like the search browser. So I'm just gonna backspace, and I'm gonna type in vacuum. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go over here to our data properties for our text. And we're going to go over here to font. And then we're going to go here to regular and click on this file here. And we're going to go here to fonts. And you should be able to go here and see all sorts of options. Now I'm going to go with this one over here, um, this 93 regular. I'm going to click on it because it has a nice round profile. And that's what I'm going for. Well, you could choose any one of these that you wanted to, but that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to go open um, font. And here I have this. By the way, when I typed this in, I did it in capitals. Um, so that's up to you as well, but I think capitals will work best. So we're then gonna go back into object mode and we're gonna press F3 on our keyboard. We're gonna type in convert. And we're gonna go convert to, and we're gonna click on mesh over here. So now if we tab into edit mode, we can select all of these guys here. And we'll just go into wireframe actually. So select these, the two U's and the M, and then go G and just move them underneath these two, or these um, characters over here, like so. And if you wanted to, you could always, you know, arrange them so they're not completely perfect. Um, it's completely up to you how much time you want to spend on arranging them. But I'm just going to go with something really basic, like so. I'm not gonna try and overdo it. So just very simple. There we go, like that. And then we're gonna press A to select everything and we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna extrude up, giving it some thickness. And let's go with something like this. That should be fine. And then let's go to our top orthographic view, press A to select everything and go G and just move it till it's sitting in the middle here. And let's go G, Z, move it down just a bit. And that way our origin point is sitting here in the middle like so. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back into object mode. Gonna make sure to save. I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to our modifiers. We're gonna go add modifier and click search. And we're gonna type in remesh. Click on remesh. We're gonna change it to sharp. And then we're gonna take up the um, resolution here. So let's go maybe up to Let's say up to six for now. And what we can do, we can try clicking on this remove disconnected. And if we're still getting these sort of bits where they're touching, you can always kind of move them apart more, or you can bump up the um, tree depth um, over here. Um, completely up to you, but I'm gonna go with this and I'm gonna come to the drop down. I'm gonna click on apply. Then I'm gonna tab into edit mode. And in edit mode, we're gonna press F3 and type in select sharp and then click on sharp edges and then go over here to the smooth tool and just click on this little gizmo and see if you can smooth it out a little bit and then press a to select everything and then with the smooth tool click on the little gizmo and smooth it out some more tab out right click and go shade smooth and if you want to you could always go to your modifiers add modifier search and type in sub and get a subdivision surface but just turn it off in the viewport um, so we're only seeing it in the final render. So now let's go into our front orthographic view. We're gonna go RX90 and hit enter. And now we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a mesh plane. 
we're gonna go into edit mode and with this plain active, we're gonna go RX90 and we're gonna press enter. And then in our right orthographic view, let's just go GY and move it forward like so. And we're gonna right click and go subdivide and let's just go over here to the subdivision and let's take it up to 50. I think 50 is a, um, gonna give us a good result. You can go even higher if you want more detail in the final wrap, but that's what I'm gonna go for now and then we're going to go e to extrude and extrude this back like so then we're going to go over here and just check our normals and they're all facing inward so we're going to press a to select everything alt n and let's just go recalculate outside now all the normals are pointing out and in our wireframe let's just go to our face select and in the right orthographic view let's just select all of these faces here like so and i'm just going to turn off the overlays for the um, normals and we're going to go X and we're going to go and delete only faces. So we have these edges still remaining. And then what we want to do, because this is going to be handy later, we want to just go ahead and select all of these edges and the outside. So I'm just in my wireframe here. And in the front view, I've just selected all of these edges like so. And we're going to go over to our data properties. We're going to click on vertex groups here, just go plus and assign, because we're going to be using that later on. But for now, Let's just go back into object mode. Let's go over to our physics and make sure to save as you're working. And then let's give this a cloth. We're gonna go down and enable pressure, give it a strength of, let's say 13. Then let's go down to the field weights and change the gravity here to zero so it doesn't fall. And we also want it to kind of close in. So um, let's go to the shape here and let's enable sewing and let's just for now do a little test so let's go to frame one hit the space bar and it should close up nicely like that so let's just go with something like that so it looks like a nice pillow and um, you can kind of drag through to you get what shape you like so i'm going to go with something like that and then i'm going to with this selected go to my modifier and just go to the cloth here and click apply. So now we have it applied in this position. And a cool thing is because we created that group here for all of these edges, we can now go ahead back to our physics. We can go and give it another cloth. And we're going to do the same things this time. Um, the only difference is we're going to use different parts of the cloth simulations. Let's go down and let's go all the way to shape. Let's go to pin groups and select those edge edges that we um, added to the group that way these ones and edges won't simulate and we also want to go over to our pressure and enable that again but this time we're going to take it into the negative so let's go with like negative 15 and let's also go to collisions and we want to enable self collision down here make sure to save and at the moment the text is sticking out a little bit here so what i'm going to do is in frame on frame one, I'm gonna tab into edit mode, press A to select everything, go S just to scale it up, just so it's not um, intersecting with the text. And I might just grab the text and just move it a little bit more into the center, like so. And also we actually wanna make sure we select this text and we just go over to our physics as well and give it a collision so it can interact with the cloth. And with all that done, let's go to frame one and let's hit the space bar Okay, so it's not working. So what I'm going to quickly do is just select a cloth, go back to the pressure, and I made it 15. It's meant to be negative 15. There we go. Okay, so let's go back to frame one, hit the space bar, and there we go. Now we're getting this kind of vacuum pack effect. Pretty cool. Let's also go right click and just go shade smooth. And that's looking a lot better. And on top of this, what we can do, we can also go over to our modifiers, add modifier, search, and type in sub and get a subdivision surface. And now that's really looking like a nice vacuum pack. So all we need to really do now is go to our physics. We need to go over to our cache and we only really need about, I'd say maximum 25 frames of simulations. Let's change the end frame to that. And then let's just go ahead and bake and bake that for 25 frames. And there we have it. We now have our vacuum pack. So you can kind of find any of these positions that you like where it's kind of vacuum packed 
and you can go ahead to your modifiers and if you want to you can go to the cloth and you can apply it so now we have this nice vacuum packed um, thing over our text so now we have all of these elements created let's now go ahead and um, go shift a let's add in a plane I'm gonna go rx90 and hit enter let's scale that a little bit on the X to make it more like a um, camera width I'm gonna go G Y and move it back and then in our front view let's just go shift a and add in a camera and move it back so you can adjust your camera however you want but I'm gonna just have a front angle for now and I'll grab that back plane and just scale it till it fills the camera view and let's go to our render settings and change it to cycles um, I recommend if you have a GPU that you always use it and then for our render max samples let's just go with um, 60 or 50 I'm just gonna go 50 because I'm doing a tutorial but now what we can do is we can go shift a we can go to our light options add in an area light and to make this look really cool I think what we can do is just have the area light kind of coming from the side like so and let's give that a strength of 120 to start with and just increase the size like that and then I'm going to duplicate it by going shift D and I'm going to have it kind of coming from this side and then shift D to duplicate and have one kind of facing in from the back like that just as a start and now let's go into our camera view let's go Z and let's click on rendered and now we've got some lighting but what we can do is we can select our plastic shrink wrap we can go over to our materials, click new, and let's call this plastic. Let's go down to transmission and make the weight all the way up to one. And over here under our surface roughness, let's just take that down to something like 0 0.09. We don't want to go all the way down. Um, that always makes it look a little bit funny. So I would just go with something like 0 0.06. And then let's go over here to our base color, drag this value all the way up to one so it's nice and white so we don't get any um, dark colors here and let's select our background and go new to create a material for that under the base color let's just make this dark but not fully black but just dark kind of dark gray and now what we can do is we can grab our lights and we can duplicate them and rotate them in camera view and that's kind of a good way to kind of get your bag to stand out is with how you position the lighting in the back giving you this sort of kind of nice rim lighting effect so something like that looks really good and what I'm going to do as well is I'll select the bag and press H to hide it and for now I'm just going to select these texts I'm going to tab into edit mode and with all of them active I'm going to press P and I'm going to go separate by loose parts and tab back out and they're still all active I'm going to press F3 and go type in origin 2 and I'm going to go origin to geometry so now they're their own separate objects but with them all still selected I'm going to hold and shift and select the V so they're all still active with the V being the main active element I'm going to go to materials and click new and it's just called as um, vacuum and let's just go over and go control L and just go link materials so now all of these have that vacuum material now we can go to our shading and let's just go Z and go rendered and we're going to go shift A over here and we're going to search and type in object and let's get to object info and then plug the random into the base color now what we can do is we can go shift A search and get a color ramp place it over here and change it from linear to constant and now what you can do you can drag these sliders around and you can give them color so I grab this one here make it blue you can click plus to add in more colors um, you kind of get the idea I'm not gonna like cover this in incredible detail because I think it's pretty easy to understand you can slide these around um, until you kind of get different distributions right um, add your own colors make it your own but I'm also gonna come here to the roughness and just drag that down a bit as well and there we have a simple cute looking kind of text material so let's go back to our layout we're going to go alt h to hide to bring back the shrink wrap and let's just grab everything like the background the cameras and the lights press m and go new collection and call it stage and go create 
So now at least we can turn off the stage over here so we don't see it. And with our main collection here, we're gonna go Shift A and just add in a empty and let's go for cube. And then let's select our shrink wrap and our text, all of it. And holding in Shift, select the empty and go Control P and let's go object, keep transform. And then let's go to our end frame value here and make it 100. And in our front view, we're just gonna double tap R of that empty selected and just rotate it and get ourselves a pose like this, something like that. And we wanna to come to frame one and with this empty active, we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe. And then we're gonna to come to frame 100 and we're gonna go I to insert another keyframe. And then let's press N to bring up our properties and go to item. And on frame 100, we just wanna come here to the Z and next to all of this over here, we just wanna type in plus and then type in 360 and hit enter. And now it's added that value and we're gonna hover over it and press I till it turns yellow again. And then let's grab both of these keyframes and press T and make the interpolation linear. Now, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna get our rotating text that's gonna be on a loop. Cool, so make sure to save. Now let's go to our render settings. Let's go down here to output and select somewhere on our computer. I'm gonna select the desktop. And let's go over and you can do PNG sequences, which is what I recommend. And then you can just compile it together in Blender or you know Adobe After Effects, whatever you use. Um, but another option is if you wanna do it directly and you're brave, you could just change it to FFmpeg video, go to encoding and then go to the container and make it MP4 and make sure to save. And that way, if you go render and render animation, it'll render it out to your selected output destination. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, definitely go ahead and um, give it a like, share it. Um, you know, let me know what you think in the comments and I will be uploading my original result to my Patreon. If you wanna find out more about that, you can go into the description below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.